Well, this is a quite, you know, it's a remarkable set of figures for borrowing and debt. We're seeing debt as a share of national income rising to levels that are higher than when the UK went to the International Monetary Fund in the 1970s. Almost 60%. Almost 60%. It's going to take a very long time, the Treasury believes, to get borrowing back down again. So they're relying on uh, clawing money back through people rising into higher tax brackets for some years to do that. We're seeing a £5 billion cut in public spending in the last year of the spending review and a cut of about a third in the growth rate of spending through the next spending review. So very much as David Cameron was saying that uh, that's what he thought ought to be done. Well, he's got his wish. But what is the great rate of uh, public spending going to be after 2010-11? Do we know? It's going to be 1.2% per year uh, on average over the three years of the spending review compared to the 1.8% a year that they penciled in at the time of the budget. And compared to the 3, 4, 5% that we've become used to. That's a, that is a eye-wateringly tight spending review. It is, and bear in mind that there will be higher unemployment costs to be paid for within that as well uh, than the Treasury was anticipating at the time of the uh, budget. Now, the, the forecast of $118 billion of debt for the next financial year nevertheless assumes that the economy starts growing again in the third quarter of next year. So it factors in some growth. Uh, what happens if the economy doesn't grow? Well, if the economy doesn't grow as quickly, then tax revenues aren't going to recover as quickly. Essentially, what the Treasury is doing is assuming that we've lost about 4% of national income. So it's as though the economy has suddenly taken a downward lurch of about 4%, and then they expect in the long term, though, that the growth rate, the trend growth rate of the economy is going to be the same as they thought at budget time. Now, some economists, I think, will think that that's maybe uh, too optimistic. I mean, it is. It makes the borrowing picture worse. But in order to get borrowing down, we're moving from essentially giving giving away £16 billion pounds in 2009-10 to taking £22 billion four years later. So there's this enormous swing from giveaway uh, to takeaway that we were anticipating in order oh, to give away to today. take back. Yes. Uh, and it's fair to say, Robert, is it not, that this government's forecasts of borrowing down the years have always been, how shall I put it, on the optimistic side. It's always ended up borrowing more than it said it was. Certainly in recent years, its borrowing forecasts have been lamentable. In the early years, the forecasts of economic growth weren't bad, but they've mm. you know, managed to get those fairly wrong recently. Um, I mean, it seems to me, two, two, two things stand out for me. One is, this is the first, what you might call, properly socialist budget that we've ever seen from this Labour government, which is quite interesting. I mean, there is genuine redistribution going on here of a sort that we actually haven't seen since Blair won that landslide, landslide in '97, He is taking from the better off in a way they've never explicitly done before. This so is the most left-wing budget since Labour came to power. Oh, by miles. Miles. By miles. And it'd be very <laughs> interesting to see how that plays with the electorate. But also, I think it's very interesting, actually, points raised by a couple of people who have been emailing in on the big element that's supposed to stimulate growth, which is this VAT cut. We're into a period where every retailer is slashing prices by 20 anyway. to 30 percent because, you know, they, they want customers yeah. in their stores. How are we going to know, frankly, whether the 2.5% is going to be passed on? When the 30 percent cut prices it know. is, we, I, I want to leave you just for a second, but we are coming back, so do you need panic, as they say, north of the border, because one of the main purposes of this budget is to get people to spend more and boost the economy. We've been saying that all afternoon. It's what the Chancellor said. It's why various taxes have been cut, even though the government's had to borrow to pay for them. But will people spend their tax cuts? Sangeeta Maisko, she